I'm Owen Bigland. This is the Inside Edge video blog. Okay, let's uh, talk about the current state of the uh, downtown Vancouver rental market right now. Uh, because I just saw some new stats that came out here on uh, what's going on. And I can tell you that, you know, we're back pretty, the rental market in downtown Vancouver, as you guys know, is always uh, low vacancy rate. We average in some cases around one, one and a half percent vacancy, sometimes even below that. You know, COVID hit, of course, and that vacancy went up. Nothing really all that substantial. I don't know if we ever broke anything more than about a three, two and a half, three percent vacancy rate. It, it, it doubled the vacancy rate, but when you're already sitting at, you know, just over one percent, it didn't really seem like uh, the rental market had changed that much. But I can tell you that the, the rental market now is pretty much back to where we were pre-COVID levels. And I think it's going to get even tighter as we move into 2022, now that these COVID restrictions are being relaxed finally, and you know the borders are opening up, we're gonna start to see uh, students uh, coming back in. We're gonna start to see contract workers coming back into the city in 2022, and that will put more pressure on an already pretty tight rental market. So the latest numbers I saw here, Canada-wide, uh, Vancouver again is the most expensive city in Canada by far, uh, to rent. A typical one bedroom in, in Vancouver right now is 2100 a month. Uh, the second most expensive city in Canada is Toronto and that comes in at 1800 a month. So we are way above Toronto. Uh, the third is Victoria at 1700 and Kelowna is, uh, is fourth. So three out of the top four spots in Canada are all in BC here. Not surprising because this is the best place in the world or best place by far in Canada to live is the West Coast, bar none. Um, that's why we've got the high real estate prices here. But you know, the other thing, interesting stat here, I see that the cost of a two bedroom condo is up 3.4% here in the last year to $3,000. So keep in mind too, these are just averages. So when they say the one bedroom condo in, in Vancouver is at 21, I agree with that. I think that's pretty accurate, but keep in mind areas like the West End down uh, in downtown Vancouver here, there are a lot of older apartments. A lot of them are pretty dilapidated. Uh, you know, we're talking 50, 60 year old wood frame apartment buildings, some older, older concrete rental buildings. You know, you can still get a one bedroom in there for sixteen hundred a month, fifteen fifty a month. So that would bring the averages down. Uh, whereas, you know, you've got areas in Coal Harbor, Yale Town, you know, full size one bedrooms maybe at six hundred square feet, or one in dens that are renting at twenty four, twenty five hundred dollars a month. So, you know, I'll give you an example. I've got I work with a lot of investor clients, and I'm I'm following up with them all the time on the units that we we buy. I give them my rental package and then of course I, you know, uh, educate them if, if they're a first time landlord on how to get a tenant, what kind of rent to ask, how to screen the tenants, run a credit check. I'll run them through all the documents they need to fill in, uh, form K and all that good stuff. And then for the next time, you know, they'll know it all. But for the first one, that's the toughest. But I always follow up, you know, because I want to know from my own database, you know, what did you able, how, were you able to rent it? How, how quick did it take? And what was your rent? So, you know, a typical one bedroom that I might sell to a client that let's call it, it's a, you know, a, a, a standard size one bedroom. We'll say it's 575 square feet to 625 square feet. We're probably going to pay 650, 675 for this unit with parking, probably in a eight to 12 year old strata just using ball, you know, vague numbers here, ballpark numbers. That unit will probably rent for 22, 2250 a month. And that's pretty much rate, rate back or actually even maybe a little higher than it was two years ago prior to COVID. And I think those rental rates moving into 22 are probably going to continue to edge up even more. I think by the end of 2022, I could easily see these kind of standard one bedroom condos, as I say, around 600 square feet, 10 year old strata, probably pushing 2300. Now, of course, you've also got higher end uh, one beds in, in more luxury style stratas. Uh, and those I, I've seen running as high as $2,800, $2,900 a month for an unfurnished one bed. But the average price is $2,100. And for a, a two bed, the average price is $3,000. And again, I'm going to see those moving up because the cavalry isn't on the way here downtown. As I said many times, look around in downtown Vancouver on how many cranes do you see? You see some. 
But where, what is under construction right now, as I've said many times here, is, is going to be luxury and ultra luxury uh, stratus from this point on. Uh, and most of those uh, purchasers on those, they're all pre-sold, those are going to be end users. Those probably aren't going to be uh, uh, rental units. There, there will be some. Sometimes people will buy them and maybe they bought them to move into, but not yet. They're going to move into it in a couple of years. They're going to get the keys on it next year and I'll rent it. But those are going to be expensive rentals in some of these buildings. A typical one bed, 600 square feet in some of these condos in, in Coal Harbor, for instance, or the West End, those are easily going to be $2,600, $2,700 a month with parking. And that's the story going forward here. And why I've said that if you can buy a condo at $1,100 a square foot, put a tenant in it for $2,200 or $2,250, hang on to it, I think you're going to do pretty well. Especially since the cavalry is not on the way for any what we would call affordable rentals. Uh, affordable meaning $2,200 a month. Uh, and because they're all going to be luxury from this point on. And I think the demand now is going to start to pick up moving into 2022 and 2023. Because again, students are going to come back in, contract workers. I think what also I've noticed is prior to COVID, you had a, uh, a lot of units that were being rented furnished. Some of them were hooked up with these corporate rental agencies where you could rent it by the month for $3,500 a month furnished. Well, when COVID hit, that wiped all that out. So a lot of those owners then switched over to one year lease to a local renter. And that's where, you know, the rental prices softened a little bit during COVID because there was some new supply that came on from the corporate rentals and the short term rentals. But once that border opens back up again here next year and moving forward, you're going to start to see when those tenants leave on those, these people are going to put these back on again as short term corporate rentals for sure. And that will thus reduce the number of units that are available on a standard, you know, one year lease and then month to month after that. You know, last final thing here, you know, inventory remains low. I've talked about this a few times, you know, there's just not a lot of inventory out there, whether you're looking to buy a, an investment unit downtown or buy your first condo, a one bedroom, let's say. And part of that, as I've said before, is, you know, there's a lot of people right now are just holding tight with what they've got. You know, there's a lot of people, I have several clients that are, have got the funds, they're living in a one bedroom right now, and they want to move up to a two bedroom or maybe a townhouse. But it's a leap of faith. You know, they have to list their place first, and that should be priority number one. Get the best price we can for it. You're not under the gun to sell it quick. Get the best price, and then I would do my best to try them, buy them as much time as we could on the completion but now we have to jump into the market here and find them a two bed or a townhouse. And that is difficult. It's a leap of faith. There's not much out there right now. And even if I can buy them two months, you know, that might be tough. I've got some buying clients right now, kind of been sitting on the sideline here waiting for the right units to come up for months now. And we still got, a, when one does come up, it could be another six, seven, eight weeks before we get keys on it. So that leap of faith is, is spooking people and I don't blame them. They're going to sell their condo. We can't find them a townhouse or a two bed that they like in the price range they want because it's such limited inventory. Now you're going to have to go to plan B, which is going to be to rent for a while until we find a place. But, you know, that's not the greatest solution. It could be done. And then again, it goes back to, you know, there is a, a shortage of these furnished rentals right now. That will, I think, change going into next year. Because at least there, there used to be a lot where you could, you know, sure, rent a place. I've done it myself several times where I've sold a property I was going to build or renovate and I rented a furnished uh, condo in Yale Town or the West End uh, for a couple of months or three months or four months. That can, you know, tide you over until you move into your renovated place or you do find the right house. So that's one of the reasons it's a self-fulfilling prophecy here. You know, people, low inventory and people don't want to move up. They don't want, they want to move up, but they're afraid to sell and get weighed back into the market because they won't be able to find something during that two month window before their place closes. It's tough. The other thing too, as I've talked about just quickly here, you know, it's also a lot of these mortgage tightening and, and, and things of that nature, the stress test. You know, there's a lot of people that, 
you know, they qualified two or three years for a condo, but based on their incomes now and the stress test, they can't really move up much more. They'd like to, but, and they could at our current interest rate, but of course they don't qualify at the current interest rate. They qualify at a, a substantially higher interest rate with the stress test. You know, I tell you, one of the solutions to that too, as I've said finally here, you know, why isn't the government, the federal government, looking at 20 and 25 year fixed term mortgages like they have in the United States? And I know why they haven't, because the banks, which I'm a major shareholder in, we love these one to five year fixed term rates because we can keep locking them in and there's a lot more certainty on the interest rate that way. It's a lot easier for the banks. But you know, if we put in a 25 year fixed term and you could lock in like in the States right now for three and a half percent, then you wouldn't need the, the stress test. And you know, it would take all the uncertainty out of these mortgage rate hikes. And that's all you see right now. You know, just a few months ago, we were touting how great these interest rates are and they're gonna stay low. But of course the media now is just bombarding us with interest rates are gonna go up, which they are, they have nowhere to go but just peppering us with all the uncertainty and be careful and homeowners are gonna be in trouble once these interest rates go up. Well, some might, most won't. Because as I've said before, most people in Canada here are not over leveraged. The Canadian banks won't let you do it. In BC here, we've got a highest percentage of owners that own clear title and the average uh, you know, uh, uh, equity to uh, value is very high here. People have 30, 40, 50% of equity built into their homes. There's a buffer there, but the media doesn't like to talk about that. But maybe we should be looking at fixed term, 25 year fixed term mortgages. It sure would unsolve, get rid of a lot of uncertainty with these upcoming interest rate hikes we're gonna get. I'm Old Big Len. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.